Hey everyone, and welcome to WDIM Plus, where today I will be exploring the 2021 Frank Grillo led action movie Boss Level and explaining the ending as well as some of the other themes and references in the movie. There are times when life really imitates art, and the writer and director of this film, Joe Carnahan, must have felt like he was in some sort of time loop trying to get this movie released, having first announced the project all the way back in 2012 and then finishing filming in 2018. This movie was originally planned to be released in the summer of 2019, but then was pulled from the schedule and languished for a year and a half waiting for a studio to release it on some platform. Hulu purchased the rights to the film in a million dollar deal and finally released it in March of 2021. The movie deals with former Delta Force soldier Roy Pulver, who was played very well by Frank Grillo as he relives the same day over and over again while a band of highly trained assassins hunt him down. What could have been a silly satire-like film actually turned into a movie with a good amount of heart and a nuanced lead character that you end up rooting for more and more as the movie goes on. The fight sequences are still a lot of fun, and the cadre of themed assassins fits right in with the video game aesthetic of the plot. As someone who has played thousands and thousands of hours of video games, I also appreciated the pacing of the film as it really felt like I was playing one of those levels that you just can't get past. While this movie definitely has a lot of entertaining and violent moments, it does delve into some very interesting theories based in science fiction, as well as leave a rather ambiguous ending that some have found to be not to their liking. So here I'll break down the major parts of the movie, as well as the ending and some of the concepts explored in the film. If you do enjoy this video, you can do a lot to help support the channel by hitting that like button. This is a new channel that I created from my main channel, What Did I Miss? And I've put a link in the description of that if you would like to check that out. This movie starts fast as the viewer is already brought into the hectic life that Roy Pulver now leads as he is immediately attacked by an assassin in his bed. This is the first video game reference in the film as killing someone as they respawn or re-enter a game is called camping. This is why the assassin in the scene has a machete, which is the known weapon of choice for the most infamous camp killer in history, the masked horror villain Jason Voorhees. Another easter egg is that during the fight between the assassin and Frank Grillo's character, he says on your left, which is a phrase that has become synonymous with the characters Captain America and the Falcon, and the first time it was uttered was in the movie The Winter Soldier, which also co-starred Frank Grillo as the villain Brock Rumelo. Another fun part of this movie is that it's filled with well-known actors and celebrities, and we get our first cameo with former and current NFL football player Rob Gronkowski playing an assassin with a minigun in a helicopter. The character's name is Gunner which besides being an obvious connection to his weapon of choice, is also a reference to his career on the football field, as a gunner is one of the players on a kickoff team, and this is basically the kickoff of the film. We also learn that Roy is despondent over his current situation and is just going through the motions so he can get to a time and place where he can just get drunk as he does not believe that there is any point to life since he just relives the same day over and over again. During the narration of his predicament, we get to see a lot of the various ways he has died, especially at the hands of an ironically named yet deadly sword-wielding assassin named Guan Yin, played brilliantly by British actress Selena Lowe, who even has her own catchphrase. I really thought Miss Lowe did a great job in this film, and I hope to see her in more action films in the future, as she really walks the line of taking herself just the right amount of seriously to be an effective villain. Even though Mel Gibson's Colonel Ventor works as the main villain of the movie, I think that she is the most memorable one. Along with Gunner and Guan Yin, there are the German twins, played by former professional MMA fighters Rashad Evans and Quentin Jackson. This is actually the second movie that Joe Carnahan has worked on that that he has included Quentin Jackson, as he also starred as B.A. Baracus, a part made famous by Mr. T, in the movie The A-Team. We learn that when Roy finally decides to call his ex-girlfriend and the mother to his child, Dr. Gemma Wells, played by Naomi Watts, who actually gets to use her natural accent for the role, that is when he learns that she was killed in an accident the night before from her less than sympathetic employer, Colonel Venter, and loses all hope for ever leaving the loop. I think this set up an added dimension that Groundhog Day, the Bill Murray movie that is constantly compared to this one, did not have, which was it made Roy a sympathetic character very early on, and it's only later in the movie Groundhog Day that you feel anything for Murray's Phil Connors character. And this only grows deeper as we learn about Roy's relationship with his estranged son and how he feels about his son's mother. After eluding and destroying a van of Gucci-level assassins that Roy refers to as Pam and Gabrielle, Roy finds himself in a Chinese restaurant owned by Chef Jake, played by comedian Ken Young. The character name Chef Jake is a play on the actor's prior TV series, Dr. Ken. And while he may be best known now for showing his penis and judging mass singers, Ken Jeong is actually a licensed physician and stopped practicing so that he could show his penis and judge mass singers. 
Roy asked for a bottle of Bai Yu, which is a very strong liquor that is also known as Chinese whiskey. At the bar, we also meet Dave, played by Sean McKinney, who plays a perfect NPC or non-player character. In video games, these are characters that the player usually has to interact with in order to proceed in the game and are there for a specific purpose. While they are there, in walks Michelle Yao's character, Dei Fang, which translated in the Chinese means with wind, and maybe a reference to the aerial fighting skills she displayed in one of her most famous performances in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and even in this movie, Movie, she is a Chinese sword master. After hearing about her character, Roy notices that it's about noon and a busboy slips. This is a reference to the movie Groundhog Day in which one of the events that Phil relives in the movie is a busboy falling and dropping plates. Roy explains that at 1247 each day is when his killers always find him and kill him and that is why he has reserved to drink himself silly until they arrive. I believe that this timestamp is actually a reference to the King James Version of the Bible, specifically Luke 1247. This could be seen as not only metaphor for the current situation Roy is in, as he is continually beaten down by these many assassins and is not prepared for what is happening to him. But I honestly think this is referencing why Naomi Watts' character Dr. Gemma Wells did what she did, as it describes that the will of God is based on faith and those that do not follow that faith will not be granted the graces of God, similar to how Dr. Wells has faith in Roy and he still wishes to be in her graces, but that he has to understand her will and have faith in it before he can help her save the world. I think this also has something to do with the ending of the film and I will discuss that later on. Even in Roy's narration of his death, he mentions that his girl is dead and dies at a moment that he can never jump back to, which is a big shot of foreshadowing into the story and we will learn later on that this is not true and thus changes his character's motivations. We get to see the day before this one and that Roy had visited Gemma under the guise that her company is hiring. Gemma takes some samples of his hair as well as other biometric data while she describes in vague terms what she is working on. We also learn that the two have a long complicated history that includes a son who is played by Rio Grillo, the lead actor's actual son whose character Joe is named after the director, Joe Carnahan. While Gemma tries to explain the danger of her work, a security guard named Brett played by comedian Will Sasso arrives to intervene. Sasso used to be on a show named Mad TV, and do yourself a favor and look up Will Sasso Kenny Rogers after watching this video. But it is here we also learn that it is his character that has rounded up this random group of assassins, as after this meeting, Gibson's Colonel Venture character orders him to round up a group of random freaks that cannot be traced back to their organization, which is aptly named Die Now. It is here also that Dr. Gemma Wells mentions the word Osiris to Roy, who is the Egyptian god of the dead. We learn later in the film that the machine that she is working on is called the Osiris Spindle, a machine that seems to be designed to allow a person to be brought back from the dead to a specific point in time. The Egyptian god that is named after was brought back from the dead by his wife Isis, and that is what keeps happening to Roy Pulver. It appears that the machine has a side effect of destroying space and time after the person affected by the machine lives too long, which is why when Roy is able to survive later, the world is swallowed up in an explosion. It appears that Dr. Wells was aware that Colonel Venter was planning on using the machine against her wishes and possibly killing her, which is why she was somehow able to enter Roy into the machine with the data and DNA from him that she collected. This is a pretty unique concept for time travel and the Groundhog Day paradox, but I'm not sure what practical application for this would have been, even if it did not destroy space and time, unless the plan was to develop the technology to make people immortal to a point. Colonel Venter mentions reshaping the world but the machine does not seem to be able to put people in the past and naming it after Osiris would not make any sense if it did. So perhaps it did not have the desired effect for what it was designed for. Honestly, the mechanics of this machine were one thing that really confused me, so let me know in the comments if you have any theories as to what the Osiris spindle was designed to accomplish. We also see that Gemma tried to call Roy at the bar earlier as well, but was under surveillance, and this no doubt led to her death. On his 141st attempt, Roy remembers the birthday present from Gemma and finds a book about the legend of Isis and Osiris, in which she highlights the parts that refer to her plan, as well as leave an inscription. As we see Roy go through multiple attempts to learn more about what is going on, I felt like his narration almost sounds like what a player would be screaming at the screen while playing the same level over and over again. Not that I've done anything like that this week. We then see Roy catch up with his son at a game tournament, and he notably interferes with the electronic signals of the games as he passes them. While the scenes with his son did stop the action of the movie Cold in the second act, I think it added a lot of significance and heart to his character and pulled Roy out of the generic action hero mold. He also learns that he is being tracked and enlists NPC Dave to help him figure out how. During another montage of Roy working his way through assassins and infiltrating Die Now, he says the phrase, I can do this all day, another reference to his role in the Captain America films. Also, when Guan Yin tells Roy about how Indiana Jones had the shits in Raiders of the Lost Ark, and that is why he famously shot a sword-wielding villain, she is telling a true story about the filming of that movie. As a sword fight was planned, but Harrison Ford and several of the crew members had food poisoning on set, so he just ad-libbed that gunshot and they ended up keeping that take. 
After finally killing Venture but losing his son in the process, Roy decides to spend his time with his son and learn more about him. During that time, his son asks Roy if he has skills like Liam Neeson's character in the movie Taken. Both Liam Neeson and Frank Grillo starred together in the movie The Grey, which was also directed by this film's director, Joe Carnahan, and Frank Grillo's other son is named Liam. By spending time with his son, he learns that there's a chance to save Dr. Wells, and in doing so, Roy learns that he must enter the machine to stop the end of the world. This will stop the machine, but not stop the events that kill Dr. Wells, Roy, and their son, so Roy must complete these events as he did in this day, knowing that if he dies, his life will not be reset, and all their efforts will be for nothing. Roy agrees to enter the machine based on the faith that Dr. Wells has shown in him, and promises to set things right as the movie ends. While the ending is left a bit ambiguous, I would like to think that Roy was able to survive the first 15 minutes of the day and save Dr. Wells, especially if you consider the Bible verse I mentioned earlier. There has been rumors that since the movie has been a modest success, there may be a sequel plan for the near future, which could be very interesting if they continue to meld sci-fi concepts in a video game style environment. Perhaps a raid style adventure would work, which would require Roy to recruit other players to embark on a long adventure with a difficult final boss that must be defeated by all the characters combined. I'm sure there's a Leroy Jenkins joke in there somewhere. But let me know in the comments, what do you think of the movie, and would you like to see another one? I'm a big Joe Carnahan fan and have enjoyed The A-Team, The Grey, Smoking Aces, as well as this film, so I'd be very interested to see another. Thank you for clicking on this video. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed it, and be sure to subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next time on What Did I Miss?